All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I have for you guys today, Andrew Jack competing in his second consecutive bodybuilding competition this past weekend. So last weekend, Andrew Jack made his bodybuilding debut, his first competition ever, winning the overall at that show and earning his pro card in the IFBB Elite Pro Organization. So he competed again this weekend under that pro card, so as a pro in Elite Pro, and again won the overall at that show. Now he says in the description of his latest post showing off what I thought were much better photos than we saw from the last show, he says he was 85% in this show as a pro. But like I said, in this post, you get a lot more photos, and I think they're a little bit higher quality photos as far as representative of the kind of shape that he was in. Um, I almost think some of these pictures looked better than the last show, to be completely honest with you guys. But it could have been lighting. I feel like the lighting was better at this show as well. And then, of course, on Larry Wheels' channel, they posted some actual HD video of Andrew Jack's second show. So overall, in all these recent pictures and videos, I think Andrew does look really good. I would like to see him in the IFBB Pro League. Um, again, the trunks that he's wearing, they look like classic physique trunks, but he is competing in bodybuilding. I guess it's just, uh, from what people have told me, it's more of a cultural thing over there that they're not wearing like the typical bodybuilding trunks. So they wear a little bit more trunks that are a little bit more conservative and cover a little bit more is the understanding that I have, but he is competing in bodybuilding. I know people are confused because of the trunks, not classic. It is bodybuilding. The trunks are just different over there for whatever reason. Again, it's the IFBB Elite Pro, not the IFBB. Different country, different organization, different rules. I know it's kind of confusing. However, I did speak to Andrew in the DMs, and he says, Hi, bro. I just wanted you to have this, and your thought will go a long way in helping push me further. These are picks collected from different people while on stage on Saturday, 10-4, 2021. First show was first place. Second show was first place overall. was complicated. I didn't care less because I was using the shows for practice to build my confidence more into the big one coming NPC and then IFBB June or August. Not elite, no more. So I know that was worded a little bit weird and it was kind of hard to understand, but my understanding is Andrew did this as a warm-up. So he basically turned pro in the other IFBB just to warm up and build confidence for the big one, the IFBB over here. The IFBB that'll get you to the Olympia stage. The IFBB that'll get you to the Arnold Classic. The IFBB Pro League here in the United States. And to do that, he would basically have to go backwards and compete in the NPC and earn a pro card over here. So basically, he proved that he can turn pro over there. So he's going from pro over there to amateur over here and then hoping to get back into the IFBB. And he's saying that's going to be around June or August. And again, my understanding was he was like 280 pounds plus. So he's a really big bodybuilder. Again, I said it before, he's taller. So that definitely factors into it. But I'm definitely excited to see if Andrew comes over to the NPC, how quickly he's able to earn a pro card and what you guys think. Do you think he could be competitive on a high level in pro bodybuilding? in the IFBB Pro League, not the Elite Pro, but over here, like on an Olympia stage, an Arnold Classic stage, a big bodybuilding stage in men's open bodybuilding. I want to know what you guys think. To me, the two big improvements that I think he needs to make are to the size of his legs. I think his conditioning could be sharper and the separation in his legs, I think, could be better. But I want to know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Now, next up in the news, I've got some brief footage of Patrick Moore from a guest posing that he did this past weekend where he's showing off the added size that he's been putting on during this time that he's taken off to really focus on growing into the men's open division. And I had a lot of people send me this story, which was posted by the Noah Valdez on Instagram. So shout out to you for posting this story. A lot of people were sending this to me, citing how improved it looks like Patrick really is. He does look a lot bigger his crazy upper body width, his legs look bigger, his arms look bigger. Of course, it's the off season, so he's going to look bigger than he looked on stage during the season last year. But I think Patrick does look improved, significantly improved. Um, he's got that crazy upper body width, like I said. His arms look huge, his legs look huge. Um, do you guys think he's going to bring a significantly improved package in 2021 or whenever he decides to compete again? Because I don't think he's officially announced that he will be doing a show this year or not. It might be next year, but again, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And now a word from our sponsors at Keeps.com. All right, guys, I'm happy to announce that Keeps has returned to sponsor today's video. So Keeps is a subscription service that focuses on making it easier and more affordable 
for men to treat their male pattern baldness online. Did you know that two out of every three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? The best way to prevent hair loss is to do something about it while you still have hair left. Prevention is key. Keeps treatments typically take between four to six months to start seeing results, so it's important to act fast. The sooner you start using Keeps, the more hair you can save. Find out today why Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors and why hundreds of thousands of men trust Keeps for their hair loss prevention. Keeps is affordable and offers generic versions of FDA-approved medications for hair loss, which makes it easier and more affordable. If you're ready to take action now and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash NSP or click the link in the description box below to receive 50% off your first order from Keeps. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash NSP. Thank you to Keeps for sponsoring today's video. Now, next up in the news, some new developments between Blessing and Nick. I know that Nick said in the past he was no longer going to engage with Blessing um, and talk the back and forth crap that they had been talking, but it looks like they are right back at it. Blessing posting this screenshot to a story of a comment from Nick Walker where Nick Walker said, Blessing, your legs look like ostrich legs on top of a short upper body. And Blessing reposted that comment on a story and said, This man said my legs look like ostrich legs. Mate, you're nothing but a walking refrigerator with frog legs. Nick Walker, I'm going to end you at the New York Pro. And then I dove a little bit deeper into the comment section on Instagram where you can kind of see this back and forth where Nick begins to say, Your legs look like ostrich legs on top of a short upper body. Blessing responds, Nick, I'm going to end your shit. And Blessing also says, Nick, my legs got better separation at eight weeks out than your little short and blocky legs with a laughing emoji. And then Matt Jansen jumps in and says, Blessing, you still didn't answer the question. Matt Jansen, of course, is Nick Walker's coach. And then Nick Walker jumps in with Blessing, come pose in my lighting then. Let's see. I don't need perfect lighting to prove I look good. Your cheeks are softer than my butt mid-off season. Come on now. And I've said this before, I agree with Nick at least on that last point, that Nick does pose in not very flattering lighting. He poses in probably the least flattering lighting a bodybuilder could pose in. And Blessing does pose in probably the most advantageous and most flattering lighting that he can find. And lighting is a big deal in bodybuilding. I've, I've even seen some people go as far as to say that bodybuilding and looking good is 75% good lighting and the other 25 is good angles. But as always, let me know what you guys think about Blessing versus Nick in the comment section below. Who's going to place higher? Do you care? Do you think either of them are even going to win the New York Pro? Or do you think somebody like Hassan Mustafa could win? And speaking of Hassan Mustafa, this recent most muscular video and picture posted by Hassan. He looks extremely impressive. And honestly, I think... He's really probably the most likely guy to win the New York Pro based on the lineup that we've seen so far. I think Hassan um, is super impressive. He's super complete. He's got really good muscle maturity. You can kind of see that graininess and that detail, that density that his muscle has. He looks like he's in great shape. He's got great vascularity. He's got these cannonball delts. And he's got much more, or at least a little more, seniority than Nick Walker and Blessing in terms of he's been pro and competed for longer than they have. He's had more pro experience than both of them, and I think his contest history, his resume is better. And while Nick and uh, Blessing might be the loudest voices, Hassan might be that dark horse, that quiet guy that gets overlooked and comes in and wins the whole show. Like I said, don't be surprised if neither Blessing or Nick come out on top at the New York Pro. Don't be surprised at all. Now, next up in the news, a Phil Heath physique update, a rare Phil Heath physique update of his midsection looking pretty slimmed down and pretty impressive. He posted this on his story and it was a repost um, from his current girlfriend, Cherie. And she talks specifically about the healing process that Phil has been going through lately, um, specifically all the struggles and the hardships that he's had in his life. And then on the medical side, some of the issues that he had with his midsection, the hernia, some microbiome issues relating to his gut health. And she talks about kind of the midsection issue that so many people have addressed over the years and then shows this picture to show. I mean, look, Phil, he's waist does look pretty slim in this picture. He's almost hitting... Um, it looks like he's trying to hit a vacuum pose almost. He's controlling the midsection in that picture, kind of uh, sucking it in. It looks like he's exhaling um, to decompress. And look, yeah, fair play. Phil does look good here, and it makes me wonder. I mean, are we ever going to see Phil Heath compete again? Would Phil Heath ever do a show that's not the Olympia? 
And are these physique updates going to be something that we continue to talk about for beyond this year if Phil stops competing? Because what I'm thinking is like, Phil took third this year, right? It wasn't like a close first and second and Phil got second. Phil came back. He got third. He pretty decisively did not win the Olympia. It was a pretty clear and apparent decision. The last time Phil was on stage in 2018, he was beaten by Sean Roden. And look, the fact of the matter is, when Phil was winning, Phil had a death grip on that Sandow trophy. Phil was not letting go, and he was holding on to that title. It was taking, you know, the, pushing these other competitors to the absolute max to even come close to Phil. And nobody was coming close for a very long time during Phil's reign. He was holding on tight to that trophy. But now it looks like his grasp is, is, is he's let go. Two times in a row now, Phil has not been able to get that Sandow back. And the question really is, will he ever be able to do that? Or was this 2020 Olympia the last Olympia that we see Phil compete at? Now, aside from prize money, there's really no reason for Phil to do any other show because he never needs to qualify for the Olympia again. A Mr. Olympia winner is qualified for life, so he wouldn't need to earn an Olympia qualification if he did want to go back to the Olympia. I always thought maybe Phil would want to do an Arnold Classic USA since he had never won an Arnold Classic USA title before. But honestly, guys, and so many people have asked me about this, I have a feeling the Arnold Classic USA is not going to happen at all this year. People are asking me, when is the new date? Is it going to be this summer? Is it going to be this fall? Is it going to be this winter? I honestly think that if it were going to happen this year, they would have already announced the dates. It's sad to say, but I honestly think we might not get an Arnold Classic USA this year. And that sucks to say, but I think that might be the case. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you think we're going to see Phil compete again, whether it be the Olympia or another pro stage? And do you think, how do you think he's going to look? Let me know in the comments down below. That's going to wrap it up for today's video, guys. I hope you did, in fact, enjoy it. Please subscribe if you have not subscribed already. As always, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Give the video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.